Paradise is the brand new novel by Mexican author Fernanda Melchor, translated into English spectacularly by Sophie Hughes. This book has just been longlisted for the International Booker Prize 2022, and I finally read it. I became a huge fan of Fernanda Melchor with her last novel, Hurricane Season, which was also translated by Sophie Hughes. Hurricane Season is a very dense novel, both narratively and thematically. It is deep, it is dark, it is difficult, and you you can go read my original written review on the blog, I'll link it in the description. Paradise is very similar to that. If you've read Hurricane Season, you'll kind of know what to expect with Paradise, at least in terms of its themes and its tone. But I would say it's a more accessible book. Hurricane Season had many, many different narrative threads and perspectives. Its text was a little denser in terms of its grammar and structure. This is a little bit more stripped down but it is just as harrowing. Paradise tells the story of two teenage boys. The titular Paradise is a luxury housing estate full of wealthy people. One of the two teenage boys lives in this luxury housing estate with his family. The other boy is very, very poor. He lives outside of the estate and he works on the estate as a gardener and a kind of a dog's body. The two of them have kind of become friends, but not really. The rich boy is called Franco, and over and over again he's just referred to as fat boy. He is rich and fat and a disgusting, nasty, horrible human being. He has befriended Polo, but Polo hasn't really befriended Franco. Polo is using Franco as a way to get free booze, free time away from his life, and he just sits and listens to Franco talk about the things he wants to talk about. And the only thing that Franco really wants to talk about is the fact that he really, really wants to sleep with his neighbor, this middle-aged woman whose husband is a TV star. And she sits at home and lives her life, and he watches her, and he's obsessed with her. He's addicted to pornography, he drinks a lot, he provides Polo with the money to buy the booze, and Polo buys it because Polo is and looks a lot older. And then the two of them just sit. Polo has an excuse to get drunk and a means to get drunk, and he sits there and he gets drunk until he passes out, all the while listening to Franco talk about all the horrible, disgusting, dreadful, horrible, awful, disgusting, dreadful things that he wants to do to this woman. The book is only about 100 pages long and it's separated into three kind of chapters, three acts. But it is mostly just one long stream. There are barely any breaks in the paragraphs. As I said, there are barely any chapters. It's just one long stream, and it's mostly from Polo's perspective. I would say it's entirely from his perspective, but we do get moments where we learn a lot about Franco, but all the while it's kind of being told to us by Polo. But Fernanda Melchor is very good at this. She, she did this before in her last book. She happily moves perspective perspectives without making it clear she's done so, and none of it is disorientating, it's not strange, it's just a technique that she uses to tell her story. And the story here is really Polo's story, or at least you feel more attached to him. Neither of them are good people. They are both born and raised by circumstance, as are all of us but they are both fundamentally broken, nasty young men. Polo, you can argue, has more of an excuse because of his financial situation and the family that he was born into and raised by. He has a cousin who lives with him, a girl, and he repeatedly refers to her with a lot of awful slurs and aggressive language. He talks about her with malice and disgust, and it's pretty clear early on that she's pregnant maybe with his kid. This is not a nice book. Polo has no respect for women. He has no respect for himself. He has no respect for anyone. He's angry. He's poor. He is forced to do extra labor by his boss. He is treated like less than nothing. Franco is just a horrible, bloated, greasy, disgusting, wretched boy. And you know right from the beginning, really, where this book is gonna go. You have a pretty clear idea of what the ending is going to look like as you read the first few pages and you learn about Franco's obsession with this woman and Polo kind of enabling him and listening to him and entertaining his fantasies. You think to yourself, all right, well, I know where this is gonna go. So the book doesn't really surprise you narratively, but it does make you think over and over again, and it will constantly impress you 
with its language and its character writing and its themes and its tone. It is an incredibly bleak novel. It is very, very unpleasant. And yet I couldn't stop reading. I read it in a single afternoon. I sat in a cafe and I read it cover to cover. I couldn't stop. I felt addicted to the lives and the narratives of these two boys. I felt addicted to the ways in which Polo would describe Fat Boy, describe his cousin, describe himself and his boss and his life. I was enraptured by this horrible world. And there is so much thematically to explore here. This is a book about class. This is a book about social divides. This is a book about masculinity and patriarchy. This is a book about men being unrestrained and aggressive and narcissistic and abusive and threatening and, and all of these terrible, terrible things that men can be. These two young boys are festering in a pool of toxicity, but they each come from very, very different worlds and have just smushed themselves together. I can't spoil things, even though it's quite predictable, but there are so many specific moments that I want to describe and talk about, but then I also don't because they are so upsetting. This is the most triggering book for so many people and so many reasons. But Fernanda Melchor has written it with a purpose. She's asking us to look at the state of the modern class divide. In Mexico, obviously, but it's applicable to anywhere and everywhere almost. Looking at the financial situations and the familial situations of people and what those things do to us. It's an extreme, extreme book. But it's also not, because people like these boys exist, and acts that they perform also happen. It's it's not pleasant, and it's tough to review for that reason. But Fernanda Melchor writes these characters with verve, that's the word that springs to mind. There's energy behind them, there is so much detail and description, and the language that she utilizes, and the translation by Stophie Hughes. These things come together to create a narrative that even in spite of how disgusting its characters and themes and events are, it becomes an addictive and absorbing narrative to get lost in because of the way that it's written in this constant stream of aggressive, nasty language. It's like being at a death metal concert. It's all absorbing and it's not the kind of thing that everyone is going to enjoy. If your sensibilities don't meet the task of reading this book, I get it, but it is so strangely absorbing, and it really does encourage you to consider the reasons behind these boys' behaviours, thoughts, actions, beliefs, opinions, everything. Almost any time I'm faced with a person online or in real life who I disagree with or I find upsetting in some way, I always train myself to think about the reasons why these people behave the way that they do, and that's exactly what this book does. You look at these two boys who are from very, very different financial situations, familial situations, and you think, okay, why? It's a hard sell. I think it's a very, very good book in terms of the ways that it's written, the ways its characters are realised, and the themes and political ideas that it's asking you to consider. But it's certainly not a pleasant read. I've made that very, very clear. And I think with a book like this, I am reviewing it and I'm giving you my thoughts and my experiences. Is it my job to recommend a book like this? I don't know. But, it is a book by a woman about masculinity, about young boys, and the toxicity that they have been raised in. And it does so much with its themes and with its narrative. Fernanda Melchor is a powerful, powerful writer. Sophie Hughes is an incredibly talented translator. And this is an incredible narrative experience. It's just tough. Subscribe for books.